Welcome to Beyond the Coverage. I'm Chris Horner, and today I want to cover a couple brilliant writers at Kern Brussels Kearns. One semi knucklehead, one big time knucklehead, one spicy taco, and one Patrick Lefebvre who's completely lost it again. And you know this is going to be a good show because I'm literally between Saturn and Mercury, so it's going to be out of this world. Now, let's get into Kern Brussels Kearns because this is an exciting race, just under 200 kilometers and about 13 big obstacles that are going to blow the race up here at Kern Brussels Kearns. But Remember, the last of the climbs and the cobbles really comes with about 50 kilometers before the finish of Kern Brussel Kern. So, if you're a really strong team like Yumbo Visma without a pure field sprinter, you want to blow this race up, okay? You want to make this race as hard as you possibly can. And in the interview with Taco Vanderhorn, the spicy kid from Intermarche, he says that Yumbo Visma is going to blow the race up and Quick Step won an easy race. Now, Kind of an insult really from Taco Vanderhorn when he says Quick Step wants an easy race, right? But it's true, he's 100% right. Quick Step, they want an easy race because, of course, with their sprinter here, Fabio Jakobsen, they want to get him to the finish. And Fabio Jakobsen, honestly, he can't climb. Now, these aren't super big bergs, and like I said, the last 50 kilometers or so are flat going in the finish. So, if you can get him over the first 150 kilometers of today's stage, he can possibly win the race, right? It's on the resume of quick step riders in the past, fast guys, we know that. So when the racing starts, cameras come on, 97 kilometers to go, Yumbo Visma's all over front, and they got one UAE Team Emirates guy in the front riding with Yumbo Visma. UAE Team Emirates, what are you doing at this point in time? Helping Yumbo Visma riding hard on the front. You don't have to do it. They got seven guys lined up on the front. They're blowing the field up. UAE Team Emirates want to jump in just to give a little bit of love so that they can say they did some help up there to keep Yumbo Visma completely fresh for the big climbs that are just about to start so that they can blow everything up. That's what I see out of UAE Team Emirates on the front. Now behind, there's a massive crash. Lots of guys are going down five Albacin riders back there Albacin de Kunic guys down and of course it's their sprinter down there their big time favorite here Jasper Philipson so with that in mind that's going to take out a big team that would be there to help a team like Quick Step make it a field sprint a team like Lotto Destiny with Arnold Delee that would like a field sprint in today's race so that is big time hit there for a team like Lotto Sudel Lotto Destiny with Arnold Delee and then the other teams, we got four quick step guys back there too. So now you got two big teams out of three that want to field sprint gone. Now you go back up to the front. Yumbo Visma's up there. They're drilling it. They're not getting a whole lot of help up there. But I did see Bahrain Victorious on the front. And Lotto was on the front riding a little bit too hard. I got to remind the Lotto guys, you got a field sprinter. You don't have to make it hard. Just back off a little bit and make it as easy as you possibly can in between all the climbs. And just get Arnold Delee to the front before the climbs start. Eventually, they'll come off and then it's the full Yumbo Visma show. Now, we're into it at about 83, 87 kilometers to go. And this is when the climb starts. Yumbo Visma is going to blow it up into the climb. They got three riders going up the front. Jan Tracknick's there. Tis Benut's there. And Nathan Van Hoydunk's there. We see the split in the right in the middle as the train for Yumbo Visma went into this climb. And they just sat up, split, and these three riders are going off the front. Now, Mate Mohorch, Bahrain Victorious, he sees the gap. He's starting to try to close it. Tim Wellen, same thing. He's just right behind Mate Mahorch. And then there it is. Peter Sagan. Total energy is throwing in. And he's trying to close the gap too. They're bridging up to the original breakaway of about six riders up there. Not super, super important to know all six. But keep in mind, Daniel Oss, total energy is up there. And Taco Vanderhorn, the spicy taco. He is riding on stellar form. Keep an eye on those two riders. As this group starts coming up to the original break, now we're going to have 11 guys coming into this move. But I want to show you a brilliant tactical move by Daniel Oss. Remember UAE Tour, the last stage, it was Michael Hessman that saw Adam Yates coming, Remco Abnerpool, and saw his teammate Sepp Kuss back there hanging on for dear life. And what did I tell you Hessman did? He went to the front and drilled it. And what did I tell you he shouldn't do? Don't drill it unless you see Sepp Kuss give you the nod. He didn't get the nod from Sepp Kuss. Up here, now you look at Daniel Oss. He's looking back over his shoulder. He knows his number one guy that he's been looking after for years, Peter Sagan's coming up in this group. And does he drill it? No, he doesn't drill it because he doesn't have to. There's three Yumbo Visma riders in there. And he knows Peter Sagan's not at 100%. 
even though he sees Peter Sagan in that group, he knows because they're roommates, they're friends, they've been riding together for years, and of course he's over 30 years old, so he's got a little bit of experience, so he knows not to get on the front and drill it like Michael Hessman did at the last stage of UAE Tour. Now, with that in mind, we got about 11 guys up here, Jan Tratnik's on the front drilling it, we see Oss there, and Oss is just sitting second wheel. A couple little splits from here and there, but for the most part, these 11 guys stay together under the force of Jan Tratnik on the front pulling it. Now, we go into the next climb that's coming up, just around 80 kilometers. All of a sudden, we see it's Tim Wellens, UAE team member, that throws a massive attack going up the cobblestone climb. Behind Mate Mahorch is trying to close the gap, full gas. Now, Tim Wellens, do I like this move? I'm not big time in favor of it, but he's trying to make the group a little bit smaller. Not against it, but you need to know if you're Tim Wellens, when you're going hard up this climb, you don't got to go any harder than what maybe the Jumbo Visma guy Tis Benut behind you can do or what, of course, Nathan Van Hoydunk can do because there's no way you're going 75 kilometers from the top of this climb all the way to the finish without a Yumbo Visma guy, right? Remember, it was seven Yumbo, Yumbo Visma guys that split this group and they had three in the last group. So let's say Tim Wellens is going full gas 100% over the top. He's basically just wasting a little bit of energy. The attack, I don't mind so much because it'll split the group up and make it a little bit smaller. You get rid of Peter Sagan, Jan Tratnik dropped, Oss dropped out of this group. A couple of the guys from the early breakaway dropped. But when we look at the guys chasing, Mate Mahorich is chasing, with his Benoud on his wheel, and Taco Vanderhorn is surviving. Well, let me remind you guys, the spicy taco was in the early break, and he's still there following Mahorich coming up this climb. Now, Mahorich, I got to ask you, I'm not, like I said, I'm not against Tim Wellens' move, maybe just a little too much effort, could have done a little bit less, but I'm just being picky. But Mate Mahorich, what are you doing? Boy, look back behind you and see who's on your wheel. Is that not a yellow jersey? You know why they make the, the jersey yellow at the Tour de France? Because it stands out bright. Now, Mate Mohorch, if you look back, you see it's a Jumbo Visma guy sitting on your wheel. Just back up and go behind him. Let Tispanu close the gap. Let him use his energy. Let Jumbo Visma close the gap up to Tim Wellens. But no, nope, Mate Mohorch going full gas up there, pulling Tispanu only to get up to Tim Wellens. Now you got four guys up there, but guess what? Nathan Van Hoydunk, he missed the move and he's chasing back there. So in this group of four, you know Tis Benut's not going to work. It's obvious, right? His teammates chasing from behind. So of course, the other three are going to have to back up, back off the gas. So it was wasted energy for Tim Wellens a little bit. Not, not big, big wasted energy, but certainly a lot of wasted energy for Mate Mahorts when he could have just followed the Yumbo Visma wheels all the way up to Tim Wellens, who had to wait for those guys because it's 75 kilometers to go. Now, we go back to the peloton. We'll see on the front. Lotto Destiny's back there chasing, trying to close his gap because they have probably one of the number one favorites in Arnold DeLee. And Quick Step's back there. But remember, they got to reduce field because when the cameras came on, they lost four riders back there. No Albacine de Kunick helping on the front because they lost at least five during that early crash here at Kern Brussel Kern. Now, with Lotto on the front, they're wasting some energy, but they got to bring this back. They only got one guy on the front, and he's going to start riding the front for a long time without much help from the other teams back there. So this group of five up front, after Nathan Van Hoy done bridged back up because they waited for him, this group of five, they're just doing some tempo up there, keeping in the gap. It's one minute. It starts going 115, 120, 130. They'll get up to about a minute and 45 before the peloton behind. Finally get their act together and start chasing because quick step, I like the idea that you give the gap up to these guys a little bit bigger and then start chasing, but they waited just a little bit too long. Now, we see the gap at about minute 45 when they start chasing. They'll start to bring it back down, but the guys up front, there's some talent up there with Taco Vanderhorn being the only rider, intelligent rider up there not to be pulling right away. He's sitting on the back, which means there's four guys up there going hard, and it wasn't until we got about 60K, 55K to go that Taco Vanderhorn had had enough recovery where he starts coming through to make five guys pulling at the front of the group. Now, we come in to 10 kilometers ago when I'm sitting on the Chesterfield listening to the GCA and commentators. It's Adam Blythe up there giving all kinds of tactical advice about what the UAE Emirates Tim Wellens should do and how he's got to handle this race. Now, he's not the fastest in this group of five, so Adam, Adam Blythe is saying that he needs to attack and he has to find some kind of ways to get up the road. But let me remind you, as the camera's sitting there at the back of the peloton with 10 kilometers to go, they got a sprinter, right? Pascal Ackerman's still in this group. Now, Pascal Ackerman, I don't know what his forms look like. He's a little bit sick at the beginning of the year, but then he was getting better and better. 
All I know is at the finish of this race, you still got a sprinter that could possibly win from that back group. And if you're in this front group of five you, with two Yumbo Visma riders, once you get under about 10 kilometers to go, Tim, you got the ability to say, ah, I got Pascal Ackerman back there. I don't know if I have to do a whole lot. And I almost guarantee you that one of the Yumbo Visma riders would have to sell out and start doing a little bit of work early. But Tim Wellens doesn't pull the Pascal Ackerman card and remember, when we're talking about Monte Mohorts, he's got a little bit of speed back there too, but not the same kind of speed as Pas Pascal Ackerman. Jumbo Visma got a little speed back there because they have Christophe Laporte, but Christophe Laporte being in Fabio Jakobsen or Arnold DeLee, nobody really sees that, so that's probably not the card they want to play. So you know these two guys up front from Jumbo Visma want to make this work. Now, we get under five kilometers to go. It's just about 4.7. This is when the magic really starts to happen here at kern Brussel kern if you didn't tune in at 97 kilometers to go. Now at 4.7, we see that front, all of a sudden we're coming into two little turns there, going through the neighborhood, and on the radio, Tish Benute gets on. He's telling Nathan Van Hoydunk, who's at the front of the group, go ahead and light it up. Nathan Van Hoydunk looks over his thing, because of course he understands it because it's coming through the radio, so he lights it up. Tim Wellens opens the gap just a little bit. Now Tim Wellens is going to have to start chasing. And guess what's happening behind? Taco Vanderhorn, the spicy taco. He knows what's happening as he sees Tis Benut opening up the gap to Tim Wellens. Taco Vanderhorn comes flying by on the right side. But Mate Mohorts can't figure out what's happening. So he thinks he's going to slop on the wheel of Tis Benut. And of course, Tis Benut just opens up the gap. So now you got everybody chasing everybody. Tim Wellens will close up on the Nathan Van Hoy dunk. Taco Vanderhorn will close up, and Mate Mahort has to do a big, big acceleration to close up on this gap. Now, we start seeing one of the first big mistakes from Tim Wellens as he closed up to Nathan Van Hoydunk because he's going to open up the gap to Nathan Van Hoydunk. Tim Wellens, what are you doing? You're sitting on the Yumbo Visma rider's wheel and you just sit up and let Nathan Van Hoydunk right away. What do you think is going to happen? Nathan Van Hoydunk sees it, lights it up on the pedals and Tim Wellens, he's going to ride over and he's going to look over to the right side over there at Mate Mahorch and flip his hand down and be like, you have to close that, Mate. So Mate closes it. It's a big effort from everyone because because Tim Wellens was knucklehead and opened the gap up to begin with. Now what's really funny, the next attack is absolutely brilliant because it's the same attack as the very first one from Mate Mahorst that he starts making mistakes. He's up there on the wheel of Nathan Van Hoydunk and he's going to let that wheel open up and then he's going to slot all the way back again behind Tis Benut. And what's Tis Benut going to do? Tis Benut's going to let off the gas, open the gap, and within six, seven hundred meters, it's an identical scenario for Mate Mahors, who's sitting last wheel as all the gaps are open up in front of him, because of course Tis Benut's not going to close it. So Mate Mahors has to do another big time dig to close the gap. Now it all comes back together again, and there's attacks all over the place, so I'm going to miss a few coming into the end here. But the next rider to put in attacks is going to be Tis Benut. That move's going to get brought back, and it was really again just let open by Tim Wellens. And, of course, Monte Mahort. So after that move gets brought back, now we start getting a little bit closer to the finish line here. And again, it's mistake after mistake that's happening. As we come up to 2.9 kilometers to go, Nathan Van Hoyden throws in another dig. That gap was just again allowed to open up, and now everybody's chasing full gas. It comes back together. Mate Mahorch is at the front. He doesn't want to be at the front sitting on a Yumbo Visma rider's wheel. He wants to be last. So for some reason... Mate Mohorch wants to go from second wheel on a Yumbo Visma rider's wheel, which I can't imagine any better place to be than on Nathan Van Hoydunk's wheel. That's first Yumbo rider or any place else you want to be at this point in time in the galaxy because that's got to be the best spot to be, right? So, of course, Mate Mohorch has got different plans. So he's going to back off. He's going to make Tim Wellens close the gap. He's going to make Tis Benut close the gap. And now, for some reason, Mate Mohorich wants to pick on Taco Vanderhorn. He looks over his shoulder, and he's like, no, you got to close the gap. He gives the chicken arm out there to Taco Vanderhorn. Let me remind you guys, sitting at home on the Chesterfield, Taco Vanderhorn's been in the break all day. Mate Mohorich, the last guy you need to be worried about when there's two Yumbo Visma guys in front of you is a guy that is spicy and diced up like Taco Vanderhorn is at this point in time because, man, he has got to be on the edge of his saddle right now with how much work he's done here at Kern Brussels Kerns. With that in mind, once Taco Vanderhorn comes across, what happens? Well, Mate Mohorich opened up the gap big time, right? When you look at the back wheel there, Tis Benut, 
Mate, Taco Vanderhorst trying to close the gap. It's full gap. Mate Mahorich, he opens up the gap. He's trying to close the gap still behind. And then as they're trying to close the gap to the three in front, the third rider back here, of course, is Tis Benut. Tis Benut's going to throw in a little acceleration. That means whatever the gap was back here, now they got to make up one more bike as Tis Benut gets up there. All of a sudden, we see the riders fan out as everything comes together. And guess who's on the front again? It's Mate Mahorich on his wheel as Nathan Van Hoyden. So he went from first place all the way to back, giving the chicken arms, closed off some more gaps, got back up to first wheel with Nathan Van Hoydunk on your wheel. Man, you went from being on a Jumbo Visma rider's wheel to chasing like crazy to now being in the front of the win again. So, of course, the next big attack is going to come from Nathan Van Hoydunk. He goes straight past Mate Mahorch. What does Mahorch do? He swings all the way to the right side of the road for some reason. I know what it is. He wants Tim Wellens to close the gap. But why? You had Nathan Van Hoydunk's wheel and you let it go. Now Tim Wellens throws back all the way to the right side of the road. Mate Mahorch swings all the way to the right, but now he's chasing. It's a big time hard chase to just about one kilometer to go when it all comes back together they'll go through the left turn with about 900 meters to go and now you look at the picture of course it's Thies Benut in last spot you know the Belgium kid's gonna throw an attack if there's any slowing down and it's his teammate in front so of course he's gonna slow down he starts to slow down all of a sudden Thies Benut's flying by the right side of the road and nobody's expecting it nobody's heads even turned to see it coming now as Thies Benut goes flying by it's Tim Wellens that comes from second wheel off of Nathan Van Hoydunk's wheel to try to close the gap. Mate Mahorch is flying up on the left side of Nathan Van Hoydunk. And guess what he does? He doesn't close up on the Tim Wellens wheel who's trying to chase down Thies Benut. Instead, he backs off the throttle and goes behind Nathan Van Hoydunk's wheel. What are you going to do behind Nathan Van Hoydunk's wheel? It's six, 700 meters before the line. Thies Benut now has been going two or three. He's at about 500 meters, so he's pulled solid. He's done his work. You know he's going to pull off. And guess who's sitting second wheel? It's Nathan Van Hoydunk. He's not going to come through when it's Thies Benut, his teammate going solo up the road. So Mate Mahorich just gave away the victory here all the way to the line. As we see Thies Benut, now he knows he's going to win. He sits up, celebrates coming across the line to be the first. Belgian rider to win here at Kern Brussel Kerns and I think the I think the commentator said about 10 years but you guys can do the math on that one yourself either way Thies Benut takes a big time his first victory in Belgium for his professional career and Thies Benut doesn't win that often because he doesn't really have fast legs impressive rider but not very fast legs but today tactically brilliant between Nathan Van Hooydunk and Thies Benut now behind in the sprint what happened? Nathan Van Hoy done controlled everybody until he knew he got close enough to the line where no one could catch his teammate up the front that was crossing the line. He threw in a big time acceleration. Taco Vanderhorn's up there and then Behind him, Mate Mahort, it comes by Taco Vanderhorn. Nathan Van Hoydunk holds on for second on the stage. Mate Mahort, who was racing for podium, not for the win today at Kern Brussels Kerns, will get himself a podium behind Taco Vanderhorn. Man, you are spicy all day putting on a display in the early break and here with a group of favorites to get fourth on the stage. Tim Wellens comes across for UA Team Emirates fifth. And when we look at the field sprint behind, Christophe Laporte, Jumbo Vismo actually wins the field sprint here against some quality sprinters. But don't get carried away because remember, they're racing for six here. They're not racing for the win. Arnold DeLee comes through just on Christophe Laporte's wheel for seventh on the stage. Great job, Arnold DeLee from Lado Sudel, who put on a big time show afterwards. Arnold DeLee gave an interview, was a bit upset at all the other teams, and I got to agree with you. Quick Step helped out a little bit here and there, but didn't do enough. FDJ didn't do enough. Trek Segafredo had three riders up there and didn't do anything at the front, so they failed. But the interview I really want to focus on is Mate Mahorch. Mahorch talked about the mistake they did in Omelette Het Newsblon on Saturday, talking about having Jonathan Milan up there and how they didn't know that they were there with Dylan Van Barley. But how can you not know your teammates up there? He's got a radio. If your teammate's up there and pulling with Dylan Van Barley, that's a huge mistake. And he pulled for 10 kilometers, then got dropped and pulled in nowhere land for 10 kilometers while Bahrain Victorious was back there not pulling at all. Knuckleheads on Saturdays, big time knuckleheads here at Kern Brussels Kerns on Sunday. And Mate Mahorz, I, I agree with you saying that Jumbo Visma can still get beat because remember, even here at the first two classics of the weekend here up in Belgium, it's still a bit watered down. Once we start getting into next weekend's races, the big time races when we're talking about Strade Bianchi and we're talking about Perry Nice, Trino Adriatico, it'll be less watered down. It'll be much more quality filled. Now, it's always a little 
little bit watered down until you're talking about July or you're talking about April at the Cobblestone Classics or the Bass Country. Those are the only races, races during the season where it's never watered down. You get the best quality fields, period. But when you're talking Strade Bianchi and you're talking about these classics coming up, Jumbo Visma are going to have their hands full when we start talking about Matthew Vanderpool showing up, but Wout Van Aert's going to come into play too. So they got some more firepower left to hold. Remember though, today's race, big time mistakes were made by Mate Mahorch. Now, when we're talking about Patrick Lefebvre, you're a knucklehead blaming your teammates, blaming your riders on, on today's Kern Russell Currents because the fact of the matter is, you sent the talent all over the place, right? UAE tour, you had Remco Evnerpool down there, Bert Van Leerberg's down there, Tim Miller's down there. When you're talking about the Frenchman, the two-time road world champion, Julian Alaphilippe, he was at Fon Ardèche. So, Quick Step had a watered down field here. I don't like the comments by Patrick Lefebvre blaming all the riders here. Man, you're the captain of the ship. If you wanted to win up here at the Classics, bring a better team. If not, be happy with the win at UAE Tour and at the French Cup race. There's no reason to be complaining. They had bad luck. Four guys went down in the crash. Okay, they weren't super at the front, but they were close enough to make me satisfied with it. And when you look at some of the tactics, I probably blame the Quick Step director for just not putting the two riders out of the three that they had left in the group to work with Lotto Sudel right away. And I'd agree with Arnold Lee that it was too late to make the, make the break, to make the effort from the group behind efficient and they just waited too long. So Patrick Lefebvre, you're a knucklehead, and you better not make those ridiculous comments about Julian Alaphilippe because he's the one guy you can count on here, along with Remco Evnerpool. And last time I checked at the UA Tour, Remco Evnerpool himself said he was alone coming up the last climb. So you better keep Julian Alaphilippe and be happy with him. Sign that boy up. That's my take here on Beyond the Coverage. Hope you guys liked and enjoyed all the knuckleheads out there, the spicy taco, Yumbo Visma riding aggressive and looked fantastic with their tactics. Tim Wellens, eh, you could do a little bit better when you just open up some ridiculous gaps up there to Yumbo Visma riders and Mate Mahorts. I've never seen so many mistakes in such a short period of time in my entire professional career. You are a knucklehead. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you at the next edition real soon.